Hey everybody, it's Randy, Spiked, Heartbreaker Relics. As you can tell, we're not in the creek today. Uh, down here we've had so much rain, it's kind of uh, kind of locked us in indoors. Uh, no field hunting, creeks are high. But we were going to put uh, some uh, sisters together for some friends of ours, and we'd had a lot of interest uh, uh, on YouTube and Facebook on what we use in the creeks to hunt with, to find artifacts, and the tools we use to find them. Uh, so we want to put this little video together. Uh, we're going to put the, go through step by step on how to build a sifter here in just a little bit. But we want to talk about a few things other people would ask us. Uh, footwear. Uh, over the last few years, through trial and error with, with sandals, with tennis shoes, boots, the whole, whole works, we found that the, uh, the hiking uh, water shoes seem to work really well. Uh, this brand I picked up at, at Academy, they're the Teva brand. They've been really good on the creek, got a good lug, uh, got a Velcro strap, tighten up with the, with the little bungee cords. Uh, I think they're about 60 bucks. Spike actually found these, uh, and the thing we like most about these type of, of sandals is the toe. Uh, we're in creeks with a lot of uh, stumps, lighter knots, things like that, so a good, a good covered toe works out good. He got these for about 20 bucks. They're working out really good for him. Uh, outerwear, we tend to like the, uh, the performance shirts, uh, along with the performance type shorts, uh, fishing shorts, you guys down here like us, at, at fish a lot, stay on the water a lot, uh, works out really well, uh, especially uh, in the early season when it's kind of cool and you get in the water, you get out, they tend to dry a little faster. Uh, polyester. Polyester, cotton on the creek, staying in there all day can uh, chafe you, especially uh, your shorts. Underwear, probably the most important. You don't want to go around all day with, with wet drawers on. You don't want to go around all day with, with wet drawers on. You don't want to go around all day with, with wet drawers on. Maybe say it like that. Uh, you end up with monkey butt, baby butt, whatever. From experience. And that, that's like I tell you. It, it took him a year or so to catch on with the, with the underwear. Uh, a couple other things we've been seeing on the internet. We started using these these food scoops. Uh, Spike's going to zip around and take care of the camera work, but. Uh, we're seeing these things on the internet for like 25, 30 bucks. This is a feed scoop. That's all this is. You pick them up at, uh, at local feed stores in town. Uh, Tractor Supply has these for like three and a half dollars. You know, don't pay 25 bucks for one of these on the internet. They're great. Just come home, drill you some holes in them yourself. Work out really good. Uh, the other thing was, if you noticed last year, we showed you the pros we use it in the fields. It's just a, a lighter stick. A thinner probe on the end of it for probing up rocks in the field. What we use on the creek, what Spike uses anyway, I'll let him carry the big one. It's a heftier dowel rod you pick up at Lowe's. Uh, the end is strictly, you know, we picked up one of the little cheap garden trials. Uh, take it out, do the same thing, drill it in and tap it in. Uh, on the other end is, uh, is just another metal rod. And we, we beef these up on the creek because Spike uses this more of a uh, uh, as much of a walking stick as he does for the probe. Uh, we'll put a little, you know, a little segment in there, and I know you've seen Spike uh, in the creek probing through the sand. Uh Hear that? Right in. See, there's a log right there, right in there. Right here, hear that gravel? That works out really good when you get down in there, find the harder rocks. Uh, like I said, this, you guys up north where you've got lots of rocks, this probably isn't an ideal tool for y'all. But down here where we've got sandbars and gravel bars, we can get in there and find the spots that have the heavier rock, and that's what we're looking for. Here in a second, we'll get started uh, on the, pro, uh, the zipper box, and we'll go through it pretty slow, uh, step by step. It'll be time lapse. Won't take up a lot of time. Uh, sit back, enjoy it. Hope you hope this informative for you. Okay, buddy, we're gonna get started on the uh, the sifter. First of all, I'll kind of give you a list of what you need for this. Uh, this is inch and a quarter PVC pipe. Uh, these are 90 elbows, whatever you want to call them. You need four of those for the shaker box. Uh, of course, your PVC glue. This is the wet and dry type. Uh, just one step less than having to do the primer and all that stuff on it. Uh, some tie wraps uh, for cable ties. You can get the white ones. Uh, the black ones are a little more expensive, but they're they're made for outdoor use uh, when you're going to leave something outside a lot. 
These are a little bit cheaper, pick them up at Lowe's also. Uh, and of course your lengths of uh, PVC pipe, inch and a quarter. Comes in 10 foot lengths. You can get uh, a full sifter box out of one 10 foot length with a little, with this much left over. So uh, with with three lengths of PVC, you can get uh, about three, three of the uh, sifter boxes out of it. What we'll be putting in the bottom is a uh, hardware cloth. This is half inch hardware cloth that comes in two foot wide and 10 foot long. Uh, we like to use the two foot wide because it's one less cut for us. If you've noticed in some of the videos, uh, Spike uses one with strictly the two and a half, uh, with a half inch uh, hardware cloth in it. I've got a piece of quarter inch laid in mine and we'll show you that there at the end. If you use strictly the quarter inch, the wiring in it's not strong enough to hold on to twist ties and you end up pulling it apart. So we end up putting the half inch in all of them and if we want something with a, with a tighter mesh, we'll just lay the uh, quarter inch in there on top of that. But uh, for these shift, shift boxes we have, the lengths that you're going to have for the long length is 23 and a quarter inches. For your short length, it's 14 inches. Uh, We'll cut some of the stuff out. This will all be time lapse for you, so it won't take forever. We'll cut some stuff out, go back, we'll show you it being put together. Uh, there's a couple of little tricks to this anyway. Mainly on the back side, when you're putting this stuff on, you know, make sure that your your hardware cloth doesn't extend outside your piping. That's why we're giving you the dimensions. When you're cutting your uh, tie wraps, it's good to use some. Uh, some dikes with that, put a little tighter, snip them off, and it doesn't leave a burr on it to get yourself caught on. We use the same dikes, side cutters, for cutting the hardware cloth. Like I said, we'll put one together, kind of a time lapse. Go back and show you uh, a couple little things about that. But uh, stick with us. Thank you now. Did that show up? Something else we use, folks, and of course it doesn't matter if you just happen to have a pair of these, uh, is the large PVC cutters. You can do this with a, with a hacksaw or a skill saw, uh, preferably something where uh, a little safer with these. But like I said, whatever you have on hand, cut PVC. We're cutting this section at 15 inches. Of these. Like I said, we're going to be making more than one of these uh, sifters today. I've already measured these at a 14 inch length for the, uh, for the short sides. We'll cut some of the longer sections now. I right, can take that up here to me. And again, this is 23 and a quarter inches. We're good there. What I like to do, do the short ends first. Take our PVC glue. Do one end of the 90, one end of the short side. Pop that in there, like so. Give it a little quarter turn or so. Let's we'll that in there for a second. You want to make sure that everything's straight and level. The easiest thing to do for that is while that one's still kind of wet, do the other side. Like so. so. We'll pop it in, give it a turn, then we'll lay it on something flat so you can kind of manipulate it a little bit and make sure both of them are even. We'll do that on both sides.
One thing we wanted to mention about these these sifters, we use these on the creeks uh, most time in shallow water. They are uh, buoyant; they'll float a little bit, uh, mainly keep us from losing them. Uh, if you're in a place where you're in deeper water and you want these things to float all the time, you know, uh, up in deeper water, uh, you can attach some of the little cool floaties on the side, the little uh, foam type things. I think they call them noodles or whatever. Pick them up at the Walmart or wherever. Uh, we tend to use ours sitting on something because that's where all the debris of the rocks and whatnot we're going to throw off to the side anyway. So it's not a necessity for us to have them floating, so to speak. But uh, we'll go ahead and put this one together, uh, finish up the tire wrapping, and uh, show you the finished product when we're done. Thanks. They will float with about one full yeah. scoop of rocks in them. But that's all, like I said, that's pretty much all we, we ever get in them anyway. We'll finish up here and be right back. posted at the end of this video, uh, just a little word format, uh, be easier for you to look at. If you don't remember, be talking real fast in the video. Uh, like I said again, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, appreciate you watching, subscribing, and y'all take care. Good luck.